and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're on the F14B Tomcat and we're looking at data link. So what is data link? Data link is the ability to share information about targets and or navigation information between different aircraft. This is split into two. We get data link 4A and data link 4C. Data link 4A is where we can hook up to a dedicated host, either an AWACS or an aircraft carrier. This allows us to share target tracks, and target tracks, if you remember, are the things we see on our TID. Also allows us to share data link waypoints and direct steering information. So an example of direct steering information is the data link can take absolute control of our plane and do a fully automatic landing with the AC. With the link 4A, up to eight target tracks can be shared at a time on a priority basis. Link 4C, on the other hand, is used to fighter-to-fighter -to -fighter communication. So there's no host involved. We can have up to four Tomcats on a Link 4C connection. With the Link 4C connection, we can only share up to four target tracks for the TID per person in the flight. Next, we're going to look at the control panel in Rio's cockpit. So I'm framing here the first panel, the Data Link control panel. We have a master switch here that can be on, off, or auxiliary. In the on position, it is on and using the link 4A. In the off position, it's off, and in the auxiliary position, it's using the link 4C. We have three thumbwheels here to change our data link frequency. It's always going to start with three. It's always going to be in the 300 megahertz range, and so we've got three here. We can't change the first digit. We can change the second digit, left and right mouse button, the single digit, and one decimal. Next we've got this button here. This allows us to run a bit test with the test, run a normal function with normal or anti-jamming function with anti-jamming. Note that anti-jamming is currently not implemented in DCS. This secondary panel here is the data link reply and antenna control panel. We've got here which antenna we use. So in this mode the data link will use the upper antenna while the uh, ARC 159 will use the lower and vice versa there. Now this doesn't actually have any function yet in DCS. Next is our reply mode. Do we want to use the data link in transmit and receive, so that's normal, or in cank, which is receive only, but we don't have the ability to transmit. These two thumbwheels here change the address. So if we were using a 4C data link with other fighters, then we have to have an address set for our particular aircraft. And we have the thumbwheel here to change our address. We're currently 02 for our aircraft, and we have two digits, so we could be up to, well, 99, I suppose. And then we have the mode switch here. We can be in tact or in canes slash waypoint. Tact is for 99% of the data link operations. Canes waypoint is for if we're on a carrier, we use this for our carrier alignment, INS alignment, and or accepting waypoints from the carrier via cable. The only other thing to point out is the DDI here, the digital data indicator. Okay, so let's start using it. First of all, we're going to show the 4C, fighter to fighter method, because it's just going to be easiest to show. So what we've got is we've got RAL here. RAL is currently um, heading east, and we've got Stahl over here, who's also currently heading east, so no one at the moment can see any of these planes behind us. So if I look on our TID here, our uh, RAL's plane, all we can see is this guy, and that up there, I believe, is Stahl. So the next thing we're going to do is set our data link up for 4C method. So first of all, this master knob here to auxiliary. And we're going to choose a frequency for ourselves. And I'm going to make that... Uh, I've chosen 3125. There's no reason. I've just chosen that because I like that number. I'm going to choose an address for ourselves. We've chosen 01 under the address. And I can change that if I want. So we're now 01. Link 4C, 3125. So now I'm going to have... Um, uh, Raoul, can you turn towards the planes, please? Uh, do you... Uh, uh, west. I found turning 270. Now, at the moment, we can see no contacts. When we turn to see the contacts, our radar will illuminate them. And then what we're going to do is send that information to Stahl's plane. Okay, we now have some bad guys. We can see with our radar, I'm now going to jump into Stahl's aircraft. Allow me, please, Stahl. So as you can see, there's nothing to see on uh, Stahl's scope at the moment. And just to prove that, we can go to our uh, knee, knee board and look at our E3 which is 322 
megahertz which is not what we're tuned into so we're not tuned into him get rid of the knee board and we can zoom out all the way 400 ground stabilizers we got nothing apart from that uh, waypoint or whatever there is no carrier we've got nothing on scope so we're going to set it all back so what we're going to do now is to tune in uh two three uh sorry three one two five down to data link 4c as address member two and then we should start receiving information uh, what i'm going to do is go to ground stabilize i'm going to zoom out quite a bit and there are all the contacts so those are all of the contacts being transmitted to us via um rel thank you very much for that information rel you're welcome sir okay so we've shown an example of how to use link 4c fighter to fighter to share targeted information between aircraft now we're going to show a link 4a so this is where we connect to a host in this case it's going to be an AWACS and sh uh, allowed to share the targets with the AWACS so he can send the targeted information to me basically so first we're going to show it without the AWACS connection so Charles if you'll turn west now I'm just going to show that we can see these guys on our radar yes yeah, by. let me just zoom out here ah there they are uh, they're just further away than I thought so we can now see them with our radar now what I'm going to do is Stahl can I have you turn away again please to say that they are going to disappear obviously I know this is all obvious stuff but I still like to show it I'm going to ground stabilize that they do take a few seconds to disappear and they've disappeared okay so I'll head cold for a little bit right now we're going to set the data link up to the mothership E3 Sentry. So we want our data link switch here to the on position for link 4A. We've got to set our frequency up here and to find the frequency of the carrier, right shift K for the knee board and then we need to have a look at the controls. To cycle the pages we've got next page and previous page. So next page and next page. And here we've got the tactical data link systems. We've got the E3 here. He's on 322.50 megahertz. Let's come out of there. Let's tune in. So we've got three two two point five zero four a selected there tack on that switch there it's a little bit hard to see so let me just dive down there a bit yep so everything's set up now oh and look all of a sudden they've reappeared because we're now accepting target prioritized targeting information from the e3 sentry and there should be eight of them there if, uh, one two three four five six seven eight yep so it's got them all there now it's also possible to send navigation points in data links we've tried it thoroughly in 4c fighter to fighter data link and we can't get that to work so we think it's targets only target tracks only with 4c 4a we don't really have a way of testing it at the moment because we can't get we've got no way of getting the a3 century to send us any navigational information any waypoints um, so we can't go any further into testing that so that's as far as we can take it at the moment okay so that's the scope of this video again if you want to go and check out um, where a link 4a can take control of your aircraft you can go watch the acls videos other than that i uh, hope that helps and see you later